Warning, what you're about to hear may contain mature language, adult situations, and depictions of graphic violence. Listener discretion is advised. Andy, man. Oh, right. We have to be careful with how many times we say it. I'm going to say it five times. I, I can see my reflection right now, so I think that counts as a mirror. It does, actually. Any reflective surface qualifies. This is my favorite part of Candyman, though, is, like, what, I- what are the rules? And I don't think they've ever really, like, explored right. what the actual rules are. So, like, right. in my mind, any reflective surface counts as a mirror. So, like, even, like, my computer screen, if I can right. see my reflection, that counts. Well, the opening of Candyman 2 establishes that the book cover counts as a mirror. Yes, so. I love that so much. Like, that, that guy who wrote the book is, yeah. like, such a piece of shit but that book cover is so fucking brilliant like yeah ah are you recording this currently yeah definitely oh excellent we just started the show perfect yeah all right yeah guys it's us elliot and keith the hosts of the trash heap a couple of real garbage men yeah sifting through the the rubble the slime and and the, the fetid swamp of classic movies giving discarded gems a second chance and always out to prove once and for all there are no garbage movies only garbage opinions and here's the thing while we're recording this keith and i are recording this right now it's still september but by the time this episode comes out yeah it's by the time be, it plops it's gonna be october and do you know what october is it's the scariest month of the year because of th- uh what's that holiday keith trash a ween No, I'm sorry. I'll, get, I'll stop pretending like I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's Halloween. It's the month of Halloween. Spooks. Ghosts, specters, ghosts, specters, goblins. Werewolves, vampires, the undead, the reanimated, yeah. uh, bogmen, frogmen, fishmen. Shit that'll you turn your it. hair white. Yeah. And... We're going to kick off a whole month of just horror movies with Candyman, the mythos. Yeah, not just st- Candyman, the guy, not just yeah. Candyman, the movie, but Candyman, the the mythology, Candyman, right. the legend, and and sort of the, the this idea of like the urban legend and uh, modern folklore as a whole. So we're going to try and cram all of that into about 45 minutes. <laughs> it's going to be a very we'll, ambitious episode. I think we're going to talk mostly about Candyman 2 since that's the one we've watched most recently, but yeah. we're going to hit we're going to hit it all. We're going to talk about all the movies that we've seen. So I'm going to talk about some of the ones we haven't. Uh we're going to talk about just what it's like to be a kid growing up in the Candyman land, you know? Yeah, Candyman Land. So back to what you're saying, though, about the rules. You're right, they're not really established. It's like... No, what does it take? Sp- like, when does it reset? So I'm gonna, I want to tell you a little story. Yeah. Uh, that, and this she'll be, she'll be a, I think, a, a good portrait of what I'm alluding to here. So I went to watch the newest Candyman, which as of yet, I've had a lot of difficulty trying to see that movie. Like, there's always been some kind of obstacle in my way. Uh, and in this case, I was ready to go. I was ready to watch. And I fired up my Roku. I'm a Roku guy, right? I got the Roku remote with mm-hmm. the little purple tab on it. Yeah, I got that too. And I I hit the microphone button. I like to talk into my remote, you know? I say yeah. the name of the movie. And uh, so I hit the microphone button. I said, Candyman. Ooh. You know what happened? It pulled Nothing. up the movie because that's what, it, that's what that function does. <laughs> And I was like, okay, let's watch some goddamn Candyman. So I tried to, I clicked through the rental shit, and I was like, okay, here we go. All of a sudden, my TV shuts off. I was like, okay, well, that happens sometimes. Sometimes, you know, the Roku needs, like, a reset, or, like, uh, sometimes you hit a button on one remote, and it does another thing to the TV. Like, whatever, that's cool. So I turn it back on, fire it all up, load it up, hit that microphone button, and I said, Candyman. The TV shuts off again. 
at this point, is I'm it, like, is this is this an actual story? I was is like, this... well, listen, listen, listen. I was like, is this a prank? Like, is there someone outside with like a maybe one of my neighbors got like a Sony TV? Like, maybe they have the same. And TV he's just that been I waiting for you to watch Candyman so he could do this trick. He's like, I know sooner or later Keith is gonna try and watch Candyman. And this is gonna. This is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it's just a prank, bro. But or maybe like we're doing that thing back and forth where we're like, I'm turning it on, uh, he's turning it off, and it's just we're like, hey, what's going on here? Like it's a sitcom, yeah. you know. But the, what happened next was the the real like kicker. Like, I, I turned the Roku back on, I hit that microphone button, and I went to say the name, and you know what I did? Hmm. I stopped, and I was like, I can't fucking say this i'm like staring at my reflection in the television glare and like looking myself in the eyes and like this this like cold sweat comes over me right and i just saw myself sitting there holding my fucking roku remote up to my mouth and i was like if i say this i'm i'm dead Candyman's gonna come out of the couch and you know like hook me in the gizzard i see and so i just stopped and I took the remote and I set it down on my table and I shut the TV off and I went on about my business. And so I did not watch Nia DaCosta's Candyman. I think you could have broken the cycle if you like had called like in between you had called up a, a, a restaurant and said like, hey, what time do you close tonight? And if they said, you know, eight o'clock. You know, a different conversation would have taken place. <laughs> you know, it would have been terrifying if what? I would have been, hey, what time do you close? And they said, Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> let me, okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever, as a child or an adult, said Candyman into the mirror five times? Oh, is it five times? Yeah. You had an extra. You had it. You could have, you could have said it. Because it only happened to you three times. Oh, I'm an idiot. Again. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, I think it was three times because I just watched Beetlejuice again. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, then you would already would have done it. Who know? would win? Okay, we'll talk about that in a, in a second. Uh, the the great Candyman versus Beetlejuice debate. Candyman would win. That's it. That was, <laughs> Candyman would win. There's going to have to have a conversation about it. Candyman would, would win. But what happens if they say each other? Okay, well, this is going to get out of hand. Uh, okay, so it's five times. Uh, so I am a, just a big coward, but yeah. also, yeah. What? Um, when does it reset? Right. No, answer so the could question. You, could you start saying Candyman uh, in 1985 and then finish in 1996? Absolutely not. You have right? to say it five times in, in a succession row. into a mirror. But no, yeah, no. If nothing you stop in and go do something else, you know, if you if you if you talk to you make a phone call, talk to somebody. Right. You say Candyman four times, right. then you say Taco Bell. See, I don't know if that would work. If you say Candyman, 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 Taco Bell, Candyman, just like that, I don't really think that would count. I think you have to physically break away from the. Oh, activity. you have to break contact with the mirror. Right, because so, let's say if someone was yelling like "Don't do it," and you said, "Well, I'm going to do it," and then you said it again, it would happen. But answer my question, have you ever, as a child or adult, said Candyman into the mirror five times? Not that I'm aware of, because apparently I thought it was only three times. <laughs> so I never even came close to actual danger. So did you ever say it three times in the mirror under the under the concept of like, oh, I, I, I'm going to get it? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I think I, I, in most of those cases, I knew better. Like I didn't... I didn't say the the shit from the Evil Dead book. I didn't um, bury anything in the pet cemetery. Uh, I did not sign up for the graveyard shift. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't open the can of trioxin, you know, Return of the Living Dead. Whatever, was it 1992? Was that the first Candyman? Yes. In 1992, I went into the bathroom, (laughs) and I said Candyman into the mirror five times holy shit hashtag no fear yeah that's why we call you cabrini greenman that's correct i did it Uh, you know what i'll probably do it again i mean you're a braver soul than most i mean don't you think all these actors would be dead in real life if you couldn't do it Uh, like for manson would have been murdered on the set of the original candy man well but i think in in the same way 
Wow, this has really got me thinking now because there's so many. There's a lot of similarities between uh, Candyman as urban legend and uh, Freddy in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. But um, I think that as long as Candyman is like in the periphery and being mentioned and celebrated, I think he can be a little more, uh, you know, judicious with whom he kills. He doesn't have to just kill everybody who says the name. Right. He also kills a lot of people who don't say the name. So yeah, just people adjacent to the p- person who said the name. So he kind of breaks his own rules frequently, right? It's true. Theoretically, if you were in the room with somebody who said it five times, but you didn't say it, you should be fine. It, it depends, right? Because the, the object of Candyman's affection or disdain, the people around them are potentially in danger, right? Depending guess, on what his I'm, goal is. But even as spoken as the rules, what are the rules? What is, how do you, how do you summon Candyman? It says, if you say Candyman five times, you're going to die. Hey, you know what? It's a movie. It's not real. You can do whatever you want. Well, I guess that's the, all the fun's over, Mr. Spooky Season. What the hell are you, why'd you kill the magic here? I told that great Look, story and everything, and everybody's yeah. on the edge of their seat. And now you're like, it's just a movie, guys. You know what? Well, I'm just, just wanted to let you know, as a boy, a child, I braved the Candyman, and I won. Well, we'll see about that. I hadn't even seen the movie at that point. I had just seen the trailer. Yeah, I didn't see it until much later. I was not aboard, all aboard the uh, Candyman uh, bandwagon when it yeah, initially came it was, out. But Yeah, it was, I was a lot lo- later until... And I saw it. And I'll actually say, like, going back and watching, like, the old trailer and stuff, the, the, the trailers do not do the movie justice, you know? No. In terms of what the movie really is and what it's about and whatnot, it just kind of sells it as a very, like, run-of-the-mill kind of slasher, which it's... I mean, it has those elements, but it's not that. That I definitely perceived it as such. I was like, "Oh, it's just it's a slasher movie, and he's just got the it's the hook for a hand." Right. I mean, I like it seemed to be like in the same category as something as Doctor G- Giggles to me or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good trailer, though. <laughs> it is a good trailer, <laughs> and a very entertaining uh, film. Doctor Giggles, we love you. So I did watch um, Candyman Two. Which I never saw before. Farewell I watched that for the to the flesh. That was the first yeah. one that I saw, actually. Oh, really? That's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, and I re- also remember the the print ad campaign was huge. Every comic book that I bought in the mid '90s had a Farewell to the Flesh ad in it. I remember that too. Yeah, and the big the big selling point of Farewell to the Flesh was that uh, the the origin, the story of Candyman, was finally revealed. Which we had before, but it's just kind of like... Yeah, in the most basic kind of rudimentary sense. Right, we just get... It's like kind of a few sentences to explain what happened. Now we actually get some flashbacks. Yeah, big go back flashback. And, yeah, they go back and show the whole thing. Uh, that's definitely one of the selling points of the movie. This one's kind Okay, so starting with the first one, just briefly. The first one is a great movie despite it being a flawed movie. It's really good. You know, it has... But it has some things in it that certainly kind of cheapen it and don't necessarily work, you know? Uh, yes, yeah, basically a grad student is doing research into like, uh, you know, inner city and urban legends and things like that and stumbles upon uh, Candyman uh, who is, you know, kind of all over in this housing project, like graffitied on the wall and talked about and is sort of their, their boogeyman. Mm-hmm. And then she, you know, finds out that the the legend is actually true, and it yeah, ruins and her life, that, and that she gets an out to F. Be real. Yeah. She gets a failing grade on her project and gets locked up into a mental hospital. Exactly. Um, and then this 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 next one, Candyman Two, is kind of funny because it kind of sucks and is kind of pretty good at the same time. Yeah. Like the good stuff is great, and the shitty yeah. stuff is fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> Like when it started, I was just kind of like groaning uh, for a while, and then I kind of like, oh, I kind of like the setup though. It's kind of like this one's more of like a, like, uh, like a crime scene investigation rather than, uh, you know, someone's been accused of murders, which does happen in Candyman. That's much later into the movie. This is kind of like how the movie sets up is like someone's in the vicinity of a Candyman murder. He's connected in these weird ways. It's like, oh. He, He's he's a uh, he's accused, and then it kind of veers away from that for a while, yeah. And then it comes back to it, 
you know, and then it just has some like kind of like scenes that are just kind of like, huh. And then it has some scenes where like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, some of the big reveals are pretty disappointing. Yeah. Like the sort of the source of Candyman's power is just kind of like a like a very arbitrary like MacGuffin. Yeah. type thing. Which he doesn't really need. Like it doesn't it's not necessary no. except for the fact that they use it against him type of thing. You know, this is directed by Bill Condon, who is uh directed the terrifying horror films Kinsey and uh <laughs> Dream Girls. Wow. So yeah, this is his foray into that. Um I think it's his first movie. Hey, you but could then, do a yeah, lot worse than uh than this. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it, I mean, this movie definitely, I think, picks up steam in the second half when we start seeing more of the stuff that's happening and uh, we get some of those uh, flashbacks like, like you're talking about. But overall, it's still just very bizarre and kind of all over the place and has some scenes that are just like laugh out loud funny, that unintentionally funny, you know? Yeah, the entertainment factor is off the chart. That's for sure. That's true. Not, I would say not in like the first 20 to 30 minutes. It's like there's moments, but it's kind of like kind of a slog for a, a little bit. And then once it starts going, though, it's definitely like this is very entertaining, despite being pretty stupid most of the time. There are some really like insanely bad effects, like the whole like mirror shatter, him like shattering as a mirror at the end. And yeah, it's definitely the, the 90s CGI. Uh, yeah, they gave it a a real nice try, but and a lot of even a lot of the practical effects. There's one where it's like a close up of a fake face, and I'm just like, ooh, that looks real bad. <laughs> Did you notice that one of the cops um, looks exactly like Ken Griffey Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> like it's like when they follow uh, the 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 what's her name Annie to the to the art dealer's little shack, and like one of the cops, the little cop that sits in the car, waits in the car, and is like man, who does that look like? And I was like, oh, fuck. Is that Ken Griffey Jr.? It looks exactly like him. It was not him. It was not him, no. He was very busy playing baseball during the 90s. Yeah. To, too busy to star in movies. but Well, he was in a little big league, so you know sure. maybe he got a taste for it. Yeah. Do, uh, doing what he does best, playing baseball. That's right. Um, yeah, there's a couple little things like that, but I was just like... Oh, and then like the whole narration, like the kind of a Greek chorus from the radio host is, is it's like fucking Wolfman Jack from uh, um, American Graffiti. Yeah. He's doing the same voice. And I just laughed every single time that guy shows. Oh, yeah. Or um, it's a, I think it's exa- the exact same actor or whoever did it in um, The Midnight Hour also. No, that's actually the actual Wolfman Jack. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Well, so this that, is a yeah, pretty that, solid impression, I think. It's a good impression, yeah. He's but he's but who is he beating this one? He's like Kingfish or something. Yeah. But it's like what like it's a solid impression, but like what, this is, seems really out of place in this movie. Yeah, you know, I like that kind of like gimmick, like the sort of like oddball narration, but I think yeah. it would have done much better to have like uh news reports or like maybe like a phony documentary or something or mm-hmm. I don't know, something like that would have been more in tone with what's going on in it. But I think right. the backdrop of uh, New Orleans and Mardi Gras is pretty cool. I think so too, even though it kind of doesn't make sense and re- and kind of contradicts uh, a lot of the first movie. But I do like it as a backdrop. Why and do you think you... it's a contradiction? Well, because in the original one, like... It's established that the you know uh, what's his Robotol Candyman's real name right <laughs> Robotussin something Ro- Robotai Robotai, Robotai. Uh, what's his first name Daniel Daniel Robotai is murdered and burnt on a pyre in Chicago on the site where Cabrini Green which is an actual area in Chicago is eventually then built right and that's why he haunts those projects there in this movie he's not murdered there he's murdered in louisiana and he's buried in like a mausoleum right you know in a grave that he would not be given given the circumstances yeah it completely just kind of ignores the fact that he was murdered and buried somewhere else in the first one 
Yeah, but the the my favorite part about that is it doesn't matter because we get a cool shot of people literally fucking in the street. That's that's a good point. Which is ultimately story plot continuity. These things don't matter when there's Mardi Gras mayhem. Yeah, mayhem and um, gratuitous gratuitous nudity. That's right. Yeah. yeah, people just having sex while everyone around them is like dancing and singing. Yeah, you make that sound like that's a thing. Like that happens a lot in this, and it's really like a, a no. Half it's a one second. shot, but I'll never yeah. forget it as yeah. long as I live. It yeah, burned into the the image of it was burned into my young mind. No, I think yes. Obviously, with this movie, it it's very nonsensical, and once you accept that, it becomes a lot more fun. But like. You watch the first, and like you said, you saw this one first, right? So you go, you go back and you watch the original Candyman retroactively, and you're like, "Oh, it's this type." It of It feels movie. like a documentary by comparison, <laughs> right? <laughs> like 100. percent Like this one goes so off the rails so quickly, you know, uh, that you're not paying attention to the fact that it doesn't make any sense. And then if you haven't seen the first one, like you wouldn't even be questioning some of these like huge plot divergence, you know, um, what beyond, beyond though, just of like the, like the over the top fun of it. What's the, what are the good parts of Candyman two? you know, some stuff that stack up against the, the original. Well, I'm actually, I'm a huge, huge fan of the opening with the sleaze ball writer, uh, making a buck off of, the Candyman uh, story and the uh, the murders. So he well, you this... get you get like so kind of an analog in that in the uh, in Rob Zombie's Halloween where Doctor Loomis kind of takes that that angle and you know milks his relationship with Michael Myers in order to to profit. But uh, I think that's really cool. I love the fake out murder during the the author's presentation, and then I love just the unhinged performance of the. Uh, the dude from the cursed family who shows right. up uh, kind of just ranting and raving and, and just going berserk over the, what this guy is doing. Well, that's funny too, because I think I agree with you. Like that scene is f- good, but it's also like good in a vacuum. Like once, once again, compared to the original movie, it doesn't quite make sense that this is this guy's, uh, this, this author's angle, because this is like a well-respected professor from cambridge you know who is now writing this sleazy book and not only is he writing this sleazy book he's doing fake out murders at his like book tour yeah just turning into like a fucking like circus show yeah and like to, it doesn't it doesn't really like a uh, correlate to his character in the first one but ignoring the first one entirely and just watching it as a thing unto itself it's a really good opening scene yeah and you, you could get the vibe that he's a totally different type of author or person, you know, than he actually is that's already been established prior to this, you know. Like the character, I can't imagine, I can't see the character from the first one doing that like little like sideshow f- fake out type of thing, you know. Also, am I supposed to believe this is the first time that guy has said Candyman five times in the mirror? He never probably gave it as much of a second thought ever in his entire life because it's he's a grown ass man. He doesn't participate in... The tomfoolery of children. Okay, that's that's fair. One of my favorite things about Candyman is the fact that he he kills, but he doesn't kill directly. Like he's not a straight line type of guy. He likes to just fly around framing people for horrible murders and then watching them kind of freak out. Well, I mean, is, is that is that his intent to frame them, or is it just a byproduct of? It seems deliberate. Because he's all like sweets to the sweet. Yeah, that's true. Although he was caught on camera murdering somebody in this one, which that scene, I, I lost my mind. <laughs> so I was He's like, supposed oh. to be invisible. Well, he is invisible, right? But like on the security, so like he murders someone in a police interrogation room. And in the, I was like, there's a camera in there. Like, you know, like there's a camera. Candyman takes all these great links to not be seen, right? By, except by the people he's terrorizing. But I'm like, there's a camera in there. And then a little bit later, one of the cops is watching the camera and it's like, oh my God, it's just someone like floats up in the air and gets ripped in half, you know? And this could have been established in a sense of like, oh, the cameras got fuzzy when he showed up. But no, it's like, so you've just discovered murder ghosts and you have video proof 
from this police station. And at that point, the movie should take a completely different turn, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't. The cop just goes like, hey, you better get out of here because uh, they're after you. But I know the truth. There's a murder ghost on the loose. And? I mean, that's just it. That's just my point. It's a funny scene. What is this la- the lady's job? She's a teacher? She's a, t- she's a school teacher, yeah. So she has no, like, vested interest in the Candyman until her brother gets accused of one of the Candyman murders or multiple Candyman murders. And then she starts her, like, kind of investigation into, like, what's going on. Yeah, I love a, uh, I love re- a school teacher with time on, her, on their hands, just off, well, it- like, solving mysteries. She she does stop going to class. Like remember, like her students come looking for her and be like, yeah. "How come you haven't been to class?" And she's like, "Well, kids, I'm I'm solving ghost murders." Yeah, I can't do dangerous reminds right now. I'm over here doing Candyman. Sorry, they did, you're yeah. thinking of a different movie. I do love I mean, all I've, those kids though. Like they got the kids are great. They got lots of very, like very interesting young actors, like with like cool like haunting sort of faces. I mean. I was going to think about like usually people's re- reactions to seeing the Candyman and watching him murder people in this movie are pretty subdued, but there's that one kid, the kid who draws the dr- does the drawings, and at the end of the movie where he's watching all this shit go down, like he's not screaming or anything, but he has like this genuine terror look in his face. I'm like, I, he, this is the only actor in the movie who's sold it. Uh, yeah, he was great. And there are some like actors in this that I like. Bill Nunn's in it. I really like him a lot. Maybe that's it. Oh, well, I mean, obviously Tony Todd as Candyman. I don't know what his name is, but he's an old character actor. He plays the art dealer. He's good. You know, there are good things in this movie. I like the, uh, I do like the the setup, I said. I wish, but it kind of wavers from it. Um, the flashbacks are pretty good. I like those, even though there's some corny lines in them. But it is kind of, it is, a lot of times I feel like we don't need those things in these types of movies, but that actually fleshed it out and I thought was pretty well done. Well, and you can also buy that in the old South, there was probably a lot of corny shit being said. Just I mean, people I strutting around their fucking plantations, being like, "The bee population certainly is staggering the minutia of the tuba duba blah 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 blah." Maybe it's not so much the lines as the delivery type of type of thing. Yeah. You know? What did you think um, of the the Candyman, uh, the story, the origin, the artist and poet and lover Daniel Robitaille? You know, being. Uh, sort of hunted down and murdered for well we get we get all that in the first one we just we just uh see it visually in this one yeah you get all the gory details all the yeah it's yeah the bee stings and his hand being cut off and uh all that stuff and then they take the uh the mirror right yeah that, that's the big moment is they take the mirror and they put it in his face and they what does he say he's like look at i think he calls himself the candy man right yeah yeah and he says uh, it five times and then gets sucked into the mirror or something. And, then, <laughs> and he's trapped. Um, that he's like happen. Zordon but from I wish Power Rangers. I think it's good in the first one that they don't show it. Yeah. Particularly since it's like, it's the whole oral history, right? That's the exactly. whole point. Yeah. As they're, tell- they're telling the legend. So it's like people are telling this back and forth, showing it. Like, I think maybe there's like a very like brief flashback. Like, but it's like just in the imagination type of thing. Or yeah, like it's super vague. Conjures, and... Yeah, someone con- as the story is being told to them, they conjure the image themselves. It just kind of flashes back and forth briefly. That's totally appropriate in the first one. If they had put this scene in the first one, it would not have worked, uh, or at least not have worked nearly as well. What in was this the name one, of the original story? The Forbidden, based on a Clive Barker short story. The original takes place in Liverpool. And has more to do with like just like general class structure rather than, you know, s- systemic racism and violence and projects and yeah. all that stuff. And obviously, class structure as well. But it, it's 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 obviously a different setting that lends itself to a different story. You know, it's funny too because I don't think the first movie really lends itself too well to a sequel. You know. So trying to go somewhere with it, like what exactly do you do? And they tried. I think they just, but I don't think they, I think they stuck too closely to the original, you know? Yeah. The the idea of the family bloodline kind of being haunted and, and tortured by, you know, this malevolent spirit is like kind of a good setup. Unfortunately, the family is just not, I don't know what you could do to make that more, engrossing 
I don't know that you can make them a sympathetic. I think you could. I think one, if you was, if one of the uh, mother character was just a slightly more likable from the onset. Man, that actress, like she's great, but I don't know that yeah. I've ever seen her in anything where I have felt an ounce of sympathy towards any of her characters. No, but she's a tremendous performer. Yes, agreed. You know, but if if they, if she was a little bit more likable and they her relationship was more present throughout the movie, you know, like. And then it was perhaps the mother trying to, maybe if she made an intentional sacrifice to atone for the sins of the past, you know? Yeah. And it was more focused on the mother-daughter relationship. That could have, it would have to be handled very delicately, which this movie is not delicate at all. Yeah, the brother character actually does a good job of, you know, he's sort of like racked with guilt and he like yeah. understands like these are the consequences of the sins of the past like he does, does a right. really good job selling that there's potential there you know and that's actually one of the things that i think is really great about the new one um and i won't spoil anything for you keith norm we we'll usually spoil it for you guys out there but i won't spoil it for you keith since you haven't seen it yet so i have just... made several attempts to watch it and i will keep attempting to watch it and i will report back the second that i do excellent so, but yeah, I won't spoil anything directly, but I'll just talk about in general concept. I think the new movie does a much better job of illustrating that the, how the Candyman is a, is actually a victim and how it's a cycle of violence. You know that his the, the violence that the Candyman unleashes is systemic in that respect. And and while the original, I mean, the first movie and Candyman two both try to do that and they do to a certain extent at the end of the day he's still a movie monster he's still like a you know uh a, a thing that jumps out of the shadows with a, with an axe you know I mean, obviously not an axe in this situation but he's still that kind of thing so the the new movie does a much better job of that it also does a much better job of you know sometimes there's like a lot of stuff, like there's some really out of place jump scares in the first two. And a lot of times where the Candyman makes an appearance out of nowhere, it's supposed to be ominous, but it just seems kind of goofy. It's just like, I'm hiding behind the couch, you know? Yeah. Whenever he does that thing where he just sort of like walks out from behind something, I'm like, mm. right. Right. Like he's now, fucking Dracula. Yeah. That's, that's pretty goofy. Now there's the scenes like, you know, in the first one where it's like, she looks down to the end of the parking garage and he's just kind of standing there. That's good. But just like there's a scene in Candyman 2 where the guy pulls a sheet, you know, off of something and Candyman's under the sheet. Yeah. That's so dumb, you know. No, it's stupid. Yeah, because though the whole like you're right, like the original has like conceptually like is much tighter because it is like when he says these things like I am the writing on the wall and you see the graffiti and you see the murals and like the way people talk about him and all this stuff, like it all like really fits together in a bigger picture. But yeah, once you start getting into like the haunted house kind of like bullshit, it's like, eh, yeah. Like and again, like the, the new movie, what I think it not only does it do, do, does, does those things better in and of themselves. What's amazing about it is that it, it, it doesn't address anything in Candyman two. So it's just basically addressing stuff from the first one. Um, Before you get too deep into yes. this, just pause right there. Uh, I have to read you this fucking quote from uh, Virginia Madsen. She she was quoted uh, talking about uh, Bernard Rose, who directed the original, had another concept in mind for the sequel that was a little bit different. And this is the quote, and it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> she says... They originally wanted us to do Candyman 2, but they didn't like Bernie's idea for the sequel. They made the Candyman into a slave, which was terrible because the Candyman was educated and raised as a free man. Bernie wanted to make him like an African-American Dracula, which I think it was so appealing to the African-American community because they finally had their own Dracula. The Candyman was a poet and smart. He wasn't really a monster. He was sort of that classical figure. <laughs> I don't know. You don't even exactly understand what she's saying. <laughs> she seems to be like contradicting herself left and right. You know, I, it's very confusing. But I got really fixated on like they finally had their own Dracula. That's also very yeah. <laughs> it's I, the stupidest thing. I mean, there is some similarities between the lore of Dracula and Candyman. You know, uh, in the sense that it's like this gothic romance and 
whatnot, but that's pretty much where it's kind of stops and starts starts and stops there. Yeah. Um, that is one of the one of the big sticking points for Tony Todd. There's a, a great interview with him on some of the like there's like a Scream Factory uh, documentary or something. Oh yeah, and I he talks some about of those, yeah. like the the gothic romance part of it was like so important to him because like he's he's very much like an actor's actor and he loves the theater and so like all that yeah. stuff and like he really leaned on everyone in Farewell to the Flesh specifically to include those scenes of Daniel Robitaille like you know, making art and being this like sort of complete person with like all the things that he does versus like just being like, he was just the guy who died. And then when he becomes Candyman, that's when he really becomes worthwhile. He didn't want that. Right. I, I think, I think that was a very wise choice. And honestly, we could have gotten more of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, particularly in the sequel, but yeah, like the, the new movie, the, the 2021 version. Yeah. It not only does things better on its own, it fleshes out the first movie and retroactively makes the first one better, you know, which I think is a very strong accomplishment because there are some direct ties between the two. So you can't watch the one without thinking about the other. And it's like, oh, okay, now this all kind of works a little bit better, you know? That's impressive. Like, that's a feat. And it's kind of unfortunate because, you know, it got released at a time when, you know, like, last fall when uh things i mean not that these things aren't 100 percent back to normal now but like going to the movies was still much more of an up in the air type of thing yeah it was a big debate about whether or not you should be going back to the movies or whether right. or not it should be released in the theaters or if it should stay on streaming or if it should if they should wait or like all of those things were kind of being bandied about right so i think a lot of people didn't see it right away and then there was a lot of bad, you know, uh, internet like talk about it, and it, all the bad internet talk about it is like ninety nine percent just like racist nonsense about oh this movie's too woke or blah blah blah, which it's not even like it's it's not even heavy handed in its themes, you know. I mean, like it's just complete like it's com- like Handyman's just supposed to be scary. And it's like you did you watch the first movie? You know, there is absolutely a. Uh, you know, a socio-political message to it, and this one just does a better job of explaining it. You know, yeah, I love that man. Anytime that shit starts happening, the the rumblings about the new Hellraiser, it's just hilarious. These reactions, it's almost like the people who originally consumed this art had no idea about the person who created it or the nature of the original works or the influences. It's like. All of that shit, like, it just went over their head by a million miles. Absolutely. Hilarious. Yeah. Well, because they watched it when they were a little kid, you know. So right, and they're, they're like, just like, ooh, scary man with hook. Right, and now they, 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 they possess this continued love for it. And then, and then, like, when something new comes out that does the essentially the exact same thing, and they're like, well, I don't know about that. You don't try to force feed me some messages about you know, things that make me uncomfortable, blah, dee, blah, dee, blah, you know? Yeah. They, they grew up into uh, dipshit adults while also being like, no, you can't upset my precious memory. Like I'm preserving right. this thing in a vacuum. Right. Yeah. It's absurd. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that that is how the, the new one came to be. And I think also just in general, a movie like that, that's a sequel X amount of years later, that is, somewhat of a reboot or remake but also a a direct sequel you know is always kind of has a a hard road to toe in general you know yeah like because of fan expectations and people who will just say like well it's not as good as this or it's not as good as that even when it is just because that's the they they go in with that attitude well there's so So many biases like inherently exactly and it's like uh, you know, everyone always wants to know what it is, right? Is it a sequel? Is it a reboot? Is it a prequel? Is it this? Is it that? And it's like, well, it's it's a fucking movie. Like, when you watch it, like, you'll kind of figure out what it what it does. And it's either going to be good or it's not going to be good. Yeah. You know, that's really all there is to it. And if you don't want to watch it, just don't fucking watch it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I bitch and moan about stuff sometimes. But it's like, I don't obsess over this, you know, know, this, you know. Every time you get bothered by a movie, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to 
grab that clip and just play it back for you. Be like, remember okay. when you said this? I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm not on message boards being like, oh, unbelievable, blah, blah, blah. I'm supposed to expect that another Candyman now exists in the days when the internet is around? How is that going to work? You You're know? making uh, video essays on YouTube, like the critical drinker. Fuck that oh, guy. Oh, I fucking hate that guy. He sucks so bad. He's such a fucking, like, incel piece of trash. And even, you know, even when some of his opinions are right, they're still wrong. Yeah, it's like, As you might by say a matter something. Of fucking principle. Yeah, it's just like the delivery of, like, your attitude of how you're saying it. You know, it's just like, yeah. go fuck yourself. That's really unfortunate that that's how the, the new Candyman kind of came to be. Because I think it's a phenomenal movie. I think it surpasses the original. Uh, I absolutely love it that's awesome that makes me more excited to see it now where do where does Candyman live in in modern mythology yeah that's a great question and also what is modern mythology like is is can candy man came along after uh michael myers jason Voorhees, freddy krueger even well, uh, even after hellraiser you know he's truly the last even though we like we've talked just established already he's a victim in this yada 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 but like in terms of just like horror icon villains he's the last one from this like chain you know because you have like a ghost face after him but ghost faced is more of like it's a self-referential kind of a nod to those villains it's not it's not something in and of itself it only exists within no, it's, the it's, context. it's an idea right it exists only within the context of all these movies it acknowledges that all these movies exist yeah. so therefore it it can't be he can't, it does, it's not a standalone icon you know yeah. uh then you have like movies like uh like hatchet you know but that's not the same thing because those movies are not as iconic they're very much just kind of like throwaway b movies no there's uh, nothing it's a, it, it kind of lives in this almost the same kind of place as ghostface where victor crowley is like a tribute Exactly. To those movies versus its own thing. Like, and it definitely feels like uh, just like a greatest hits of other things than its own. Like, Candyman definitely stands on its own. Even like, and the other thing too, I think for it to be truly iconic, you know, it's like, it has to be known outside of people who have, not just people who have seen the movie. You know, like, I can say Freddy Cougar to somebody who's never seen a Nightmare on Elm Street movie and they know exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah, they knew the basic. You know, the prop, most P- Candyman maybe is not as famous as those, but people will still be like, oh, yeah, that's that movie with the guy with the hook, you know? Yeah, they and, know the saying the name, like the all the like urban legend shit that surrounds it, which is kind if, of the brilliance of it, right? If you came up, someone came up to me and said, like, what do you think of Victor Crowley? Even I would have to be like, it might take me a second to be like, Victor, what? Oh, the guy from Hatchet? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, it wouldn't, it may not immediately re- register if it was just spoken completely out of context, you yeah. know? Uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't think those those examples count. This is the la- he is the last guy. He's the last one to just show up. And now we're you know we're in a in a realm where, yeah, there's the new Hellraiser, but it's a continuation of one of those characters before. The new Candyman is this character. We had the remake of Friday the Thirteenth. The fr- you know we getting these like new Halloween movies, but it's all a continuation of these guys who've come before. We haven't had a new one in you know and a new character who's entered into the the cultural lexicon like the way these characters have in the past. Well, I'm wondering now, cause I'm, I'm thinking of uh, who are these new characters to enter the mythology, right? And you've got like uh, the Baba Duke, but that's a kind of a standalone character, right? It's sure. not, I mean, one, it's not even like a horror villain in the sense that it's a tangible thing, you know, it's a completely abstract character uh and it's just one one and done you know it's not this it's not a franchise this... player right <laughs> okay okay what about brahms the boy i mean that stuff there's been two of those movies but once again it's like i mean i think there have been attempts to make these characters but they haven't landed you know at least not in the same sense what's the know? one with the what's the red and black face guy the demon. Right. Oh, are you talking Ethan about Ethan Hawke? Is it sinister? No, 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 no. Oh, it's not sinister. Yeah. It's uh, the Patrick uh, Patrick the, Wilson. That is uh, that's uh, Insidious. Insidious. Yes, that's a whole ass. Yeah, but I mean, like, do you even really think about the villain and so much in that movie? I don't know. I've never watched it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm just throwing in fact, out ideas actually, here. In fact, actually, it's different characters, too. Like, I've seen in the, the, the villain in the second one is a different villain from the first one. Oh. And then there is the uh, Bagul from Sinister. I'm sorry? Bagul from Sinister. That's that's the uh, that's the monster. <laughs> what? Have you never seen Sinister? It's the Bagul. His name's Bagul. The Bagul. <laughs> the Bagul. He's like, hey, and the Bagul. Stop. If you say it three times, a bowl of spaghetti appears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. That's that's not cool. Uh, I, hey. I'm going to allow it. Okay, maybe this Halloween I'm going to catch up on all this bullshit that I never watch because I'm looking at Wow, I'm surprised you never saw Sinister. I've seen the... And there are two Sinister movies, but like, yeah, it's like what's famous is Sinister. You know, you you refer to those movies... It's the movies, right? Right, right. The film... You don't... You say... You might say, I'm going to go watch the new Freddy movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go watch the new Jason movie. I'm going to go watch Michael Myers movie. You're not going to say, I'm going to go watch the new Bagul movie. (laughs) Okay, okay. I got some more to rattle off for you here then. This is yeah. interesting to me. Dead Silence. One and done. But out of Dead Silence, what did they get? Uh, Annabelle? Or where is Annabelle, Annabelle from? Okay. What did that that's, come from? That, that, that started in The Conjuring ah. and then got its own kind of like little series. Yeah. That's closer, but Annabelle doesn't really have a personality because she's an inanimate object, you know? Hmm. She doesn't... Ha- she doesn't... Uh, I mean, even f- like... Michael Myers doesn't say a single word, you know, has m- more personality. Annabelle just sits there when bad things happen around her, you know? Oh, okay. See, I haven't seen that either. I have not watched any of this bullshit. These movies do not look very good to me. <laughs> I saw the first Annabelle in the theater. Uh, did you You saw The Conjuring, though, right? Uh, Yeah, I saw the first one. Yeah. So, yeah, she has, like, she's in the little opening of the first one. And I saw the first Annabelle in the theater, like standalone Annabelle. And there's actually like one or two legitimately like, oh, that's really creepy or that's a really good like scare scene or well done scene in general. But there's also stuff that's absurd. I There's this part of the movie where I was laughing so uncontrollably loud that I could tell people around me were getting upset. But I couldn't stop because it was such a stupid scene. I love that, though. That you got you were, you like when people get mad at me. <laughs> No, I love when uh, shit is so uncontrollably funny that you, oh, can't, yeah. you can't handle it. Okay, what else you got, man? I, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking by that there ha- this is this is the last one. This is the last guy. Yeah, you know, it's. what do you think about Saw? I think I already know what you're going to say, but what about oh, Saw? Oh, you know what? Okay, I will say that's, that's pretty close. Jigsaw is pretty close. Even though he's just a guy with cancer. Well, that's fine. You know, it's like you don't inherently have to have magical powers. I will say those movies, you know, as general as a series are kind of, is kind of like a, a second, like a bottom, like a second tier series compared to the other ones. Yeah, I'll give it to you. He's the, the definitely the closest thing that we have to like a, a more mo- recent modern horror villain icon. Well, what about, uh, I'm not going to get into the weeds on some of these. Because there, no. there's shit like Terrifier, like the stupid clown and like Yeah, that doesn't like count. That, that doesn't know. count. It's weird how streaming has kind of like altered yeah. uh, this, the, our perception of this stuff. But I mean bit. like. But I'm looking about, I'm looking at uh, just uh, some of these horror franchises of like the 2010s and stuff. And this is just fascinating shit, man. How things, mm-hmm. how much things have changed, and how is it really is so many ghost movies and like haunted right. movies? Yeah, they moved away from this like Gollum esque, you know, villain types of characters that they have in these movies. You know, not Lord of the Rings Gollum, but the Legend of the Gollum. You know, first Candyman ninety two, Farewell to Fest ninety five, the third Candyman's direct to video, nobody saw it. Like that's, I mean, that's really kind of that's pri- that's prior to streaming, and that's kind of like like the their true last hurrah with yeah Jigsaw kind of cozying up next to it because I would say even that like it's the same type of thing like if I would say Jigsaw to someone who doesn't watch horror movies they may not know who I'm talking about right but they're gonna know these other characters. Well, and even if they don't know the name Jigsaw, they if you're like Saw or like the little puppet on the bike. Right. You know, they're going to know that yeah. for sure. 
But yeah, it really is. Like all of these other things are just like different ghost movies and things. And like movies like It Follows, you know, where there right. isn't any one, like it's this idea. Right. That is the, the, the villain and the boogeyman. It's not. And, and you, and that's fine. I'm not saying I'm a, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying like, where are all these like weird monster movie icons of, 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 of yesteryear, uh, I'm just noting that 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 uh, as a fact that that this is, a, you know, kind of the, the last run of this. You know? Yeah. I mean, I would love to hear from people about like what they think are the big, you know, sort of icons of like the last ten, fifteen years, as mm-hmm. far as you know, horror. Right. Because I fancy myself kind of a, a horror guy, you know, uh, but. The things that have sort of dominated at least mainstream movies are a lot different. Even movies like Green Room and Get Out and uh, Don't Breathe. You know, it's these, it's just people, people treating each other terribly. (laughs) Well, think about this too. Think about uh, horror movies like of the past. Who was the returning character in most of these? It was the villain was the returning character, not necessarily the protagonists. Yeah. Now in these horror franchises, who's coming back? You know, you have the Conjuring series. It's the Warrens that keep coming back. Yeah. You know, it's 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 that it's that it's those two characters, and they're dealing with a different supernatural element in each movie. Right. Or a quiet Same, place. Right. Right. You know, it's or, the family it, coming back, and how have they changed and evolved and. Or we also have a lot of mo- more movies that kind of just lend itself to just like a one and done type scenario. Like you're not going to have a sequel to Hereditary, you know? You don't think so? I yeah, I really don't think so. Hmm. That's the way Candyman has fit himself into the pop cultural mythos and lexicon. What about the actual just like day to day stuff? You know because. Candyman was not an actual urban legend prior to the movies, you know, but I think it is something that people are afraid to say in the mirror. You know? Yeah. And that's where like, again, the, the parallel between Wes Craven's new nightmare and like what Candyman actually did is so right. interesting to me. Like he transcended and became maybe not a huge sort of urban legend, but uh, along with the what is it, Bloody Mary? Right. Well, see, I mean, that's exactly what I thought of when I saw when I was a little kid and I saw the TV commercial for Candyman. I was like, oh, this is like Bloody Mary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But now, people, because Candyman is like more uh, sort of pervasive and and part of the culture, it's sort of replaced it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You, I think, you yeah. see people saying Candyman instead of Bloody Mary, and people are like, right. huh? What's Bloody Mary? But I mean, okay, so that's interesting too because like. I haven't read the original short story, so I don't know to what degree like the mirror thing is is part of it. Um, I do know that the depiction, like one, it's like obviously it's, it's set in like Liverpool, and I think the the way the character is described is more of like this like half man thing who's come out of the earth that has like plants growing off of him, and it's just like this decaying body that's kind of absorbed itself into its environment. Uh, so that physical depiction is obviously very different. So I'm not sure if the if the book kind of takes that mirror thing, but the movie certainly takes the concept of saying something in the mirror, which is a pre-existing urban legend, and reformats it into something that now, like you said, has taken over. I would say probably kids are much more familiar with that the saying the Candyman in the mirror versus saying Bloody Mary in the mirror. I mean, it's pure speculation kind of at my point, but I, it just seems like it's more pro- prevalent now, you know? Yeah, I th- and I think we're in a generation where we sort of saw the last gasp of that, and it was like Candyman was that new wave of of urban legend type stuff that was, you know, people talk about at sleepovers and at parties and whatever. And then now, uh, I think a younger generation, up until the new Candyman that was probably forgotten and either replaced with like, probably with like internet sort of lore, right? Yeah, like Slender like Man, man and yeah, creepypastas and all that kind yeah. of stuff. 
So, I mean, that's the same thing. It's just the delivery system is a little bit different, you yeah. know? Like, and you could say, like, yeah, it was all, like, the urban legends were all entirely word of mouth. But I remember as a kid having books, there was, like, 101 urban legends or yeah. something, you know? So, the delivery system wasn't always just, like, oh, I heard from my friend. Yeah. That, you know, this guy, you know, blah, 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 and yada, yada. And, like, also, like, scary stories to tell in the dark, those books, yeah. t- they had a tons of, like, they took tons of old urban legends and re- reformatted them into like these little kids scary things. Oh yeah, like the it was maniac just a remix, the, for sure. The maniac in the back seat and like the, the the hook hand getting stuck in the yeah in the, on the in the car door type of thing, you know. And like, all it's you know all it's gonna take is like one TikTok trend, and Candyman is back. Right, like that is if uh, like some kind of a Candyman like video. Of you know people saying it at a party or you know doing whatever and something wacky happens, then all of a sudden Candyman is like back on the tip of everyone's tongue. Should we do something where we for- we forge this video? It's like I was like my friend Keith's. We were at a party and he said Candyman five times. I haven't seen him in three months. Please help me find him. No, we can't do it. You know why? There's one one very simple reason why it won't work if we try to do it. Because we're grown men, it's we can get better. some 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 tweens to do it. So we should we, we have to start happen. hanging out with kids and influence. Yeah, them. we'll need to meet saying? some children. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the library. Hey, you know what? What's the, what's the story in the original Candyman movie? It's a, an adult going going to investigate who starts starts this whole thing, right? I'll get I'll get. You'll disappear. You'll lay low, right? I'll be like he said to Candyman. I'll get arrested for your murder, right? I'm on trial, and then one day you just walk into court and you'd be like, "Hey," I'm like, "Where are you?" He's like, "I was hanging out with Candyman. He's actually a pretty cool dude." <laughs> We're gonna go get dim sum next week. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's a lot of fun, guys. You guys want to like? Yeah. Everyone should be saying his name in the mirror. He's into board games. He has a lot of hobbies. Yeah. He volunteers at the zoo. He's a sweetheart. We gotta take away the the bad name that he's gotten, you know, all these rumors and innuendo, and let's just t- let him live who as he as he was meant to be, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that settles it. We're gonna go find the Candyman. Okay, we got some homework to do. Do you think Candyman is a good Halloween movie? I think you know, Candyman's because... a great Halloween movie yeah. and an even better Halloween costume. It is a good costume. And it's a couple's costume because throughout the movies, there's lots of opportunities to pair Candyman with a, a love interest or a different character. Right. Like, especially the first one, if you could do a, a Candyman with Helen from the final shot of the movie. Right. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Because, baby. yeah, the, uh, in the other ones, it's kind of like. You're just if you're you're just a person wearing regular clothes and <laughs> standing next to someone dressed as the candy man. Yeah, or you could be the from Farewell to the Flesh, you could be the professor with the reflective color book. Or you could be like the yeah. dead brother or it's, it's still a little a bit guy. of a deep cut, but I think yeah. it, you could make it work. Yeah. Um it is a good Halloween movie, even though it's like normally I kinda of, when I think about Halloween movies, I think of things not just horror movies, period, but like things that involve a sense of fall, you know, things that are set on Halloween, things with like lots of full moons and yeah. or classic monsters. Sure. You know, that's kind of which, which this movie doesn't necessarily have those things exactly, but it, because it's steeped in this deep lore, you know, it feels like this story that's been told around, first it was told around campfires and then it was told, you know, around... Uh, the dinner table and you know that it's it's this thing this legend that's evolved over time just like the legends of yore you know yeah it's not legend of sleepy hollow but it's it's more of a modern yeah exactly so i think it really does fit well into like something you would want to watch around halloween yeah without question i'm gonna have to go rewatch the the new one yeah all right. Well, you got anything else to add on this particular subject, or is that kind of sum up our Candyman retrospective? No, I think we did a pretty good job uh, covering the bases. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty satisfied. So, all right, guys, go check out the. Wait, I actually do have one question for you. Yeah. Because, have you ever seen the third one, the direct-to-video <laughs> one? No. 
I remember Neither it being I. on television one time, and I kind of started it, and I just uh, never went anywhere. It is notoriously bad from what I hear, yeah. and not even in like any, you know, I'll watch a, a piece of shit uh, any day of the week, but it seems to have no redeeming entertainment or fun or really anything going for yeah, it. Yeah, I've watched it, and I've seen like, but just from like little clips I've seen, trailers, and what I've heard, like, it seems that it like takes away any of the you know the the gristle from the fir- first two you know and any of the things like any of the, like the actual story elements and just throws them away into just a straight up like i'm gonna kill you you know because you're a pretty girl type of story yeah but whatever we don't need to watch that you don't need to watch it but you do need to watch the new one guys give this movie the love it deserves so that pretty much wraps it up uh, we're going to get out of here. And uh, Keith, what do we always say? Well, first off, happy trash mm-hmm. We got some big uh, things coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned and please enjoy. Don't forget to follow us on uh, Instagram at Trash Heap Pod so you can see uh, what we're up to next. Make sure you go back and check out the episode we just did with uh, Vicky Clarici on Sleepaway Camp 2. That episode was a lot of fun, despite the some of the audio issues we had. Sorry about the echo, but uh, give it a listen, and uh, we'll see you at the movies. No, wait, that's yeah. a different show. I like that one. We Don't just take that's, it. That's, it's, not, it's, it's not being used anymore. Uh, we can't steal it. We got a good one. We do. All right, Keith, what do we always say? In, instead of me saying it, I'm going to put in a clip from the first Candyman where the guy's like, I hear you looking for Candyman, bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're doing the lineup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'll, okay. then I'll say the thing. And until next time, the dumpster is closed. Goodbye, everyone. Everybody go back to doing what you were doing. <laughs>